<laughs> I think. Try not to spill my coffee on the books and bear challenge. <laughs> hey everyone, welcome, welcome back to How to Train Your Gavin. Today I thought I would do a book haul. I did one last month, but it was a, a little bit of a different format. This is going to be a normal, normal book haul. So that means I can show middle grade in this video. <laughs> also, I was going to sort these out into age categories, but as soon as I sat down to take the thumbnail, everything just like collapsed in on me. So I'm just going to show them as they are to be honest. Don't worry, I am a skilled coffee drinker. I will not be spilling this coffee on any of these books, I promise. Oh! So a few of these were sent to me from publishers. I got a couple gifted from me from friends, so thank you so much everybody who sent me something. I really appreciate it. And the others I probably got at Waterstones or on eBay. I actually got some good deals on eBay. So I guess let's just start. Let's start with this side. Firstly, we have this gorgeous edition of Dune by Frank Herbert. I honestly don't know how these books are going to look on the camera, to be honest. I'm so far away. I've never been this far away before. Uh, so Dune by Frank Herbert. And this special edition, Waterstones exclusive, I think, has just come out with these beautiful sprayed edges. Um, just purple on the top and bottom and then that beautiful image on the side there as well. Yeah, I don't think there's really anything under the dust jacket except on the spine there is writing. I think it might be a quote from the book. This was a bad idea. I should not be filming this far away from the camera. Oh, and the end papers though. End papers are lovely. And then the end papers there. I do want to read this eventually, but it's one of those books that really does intimidate me. So this one follows Paul and his family. They've been kind of exiled to this planet called Dune. Well, it has a different name, but it's just called Dune. Or Dune? Dune. Dune? June. No. One of the above. And they've been outmaneuvered by, like, their arch nemesis, so they've been, like, sent to this planet. And they discover, like, secrets about Dune. I haven't ever seen an adaptation of this, and I do want to see the new film. So as much as this does intimidate me, I am so intrigued. I think most of it will probably go over my head, but I'm obsessed already just with the sprint edges alone. Next, I'll show you this one because I've talked about this a few times. Frostheart, Rise of the World Eater by Jamie Littler. This is the third and final book in the Frostheart series. This also has sprayed edges, and this one honestly made me cry. It made me cry. I read this one last month. I have a reading vlog for it. It's the final book of my favourite children's trilogy of all time. And I don't want to explain what this series is about again, but just know that it is one of my favourite middle grade series, and I just think it's absolutely fantastic, filled with beautiful illustrations. One of the best, if not the best. So, I love it so much. On the middle grade train then, I have Pages and Call the Book Smugglers by Anna James. This is the fourth book in the Pages and Core series, and this one was so good. I read this one earlier this month. Fantastic. I think it's my favourite one so far, mainly because it incorporates The Wizard of Oz, which is one of my favourite stories of all time. And this one follows Milo, who is a character introduced in book three. And Tilly ends up helping him because there are these poisoned copies of The Wizard of Oz that has made Tilly's grandfather fall asleep, as well as Milo's guardian. So they need to figure out what's going on. But this introduces things like the alchemist and the botanist, and there is like this bigger thing going on. But it's so bloody brilliant. I absolutely adore this book. Under the Dust Jacket as well. I mean, all of the pages and core hardback books are sexy under the dust jacket. I genuinely cannot say from here. <laughs> I cannot say from here, and I've got 50-50 vision, I mean, 20-20 uh, vision, yeah, the um, Under the Dust Jacket, all of the hardback pages and core books have something like that, and it's honestly, oh, sublime, absolutely sublime. Changing the pace up a little bit, I have the Haunting Season, and these are ghastly, no, ghostly, <laughs> ghostly tales for long winter nights. Honestly, it doesn't matter if you're over there, right in front of my face. I'm still going to get it wrong. This one has many different authors involved, including Imogen Hearns Gower, Kerry Millwood Hargrave, which was one of the main reasons why I picked this up, because I love Kerry Millwood Hargrave, Andrew Michael Hurley, Jess Kidd, Elizabeth McNeil, Natasha Pulley, Laura Purcell. So yeah, it looks like fantastic. I can't wait to read some of these. I think it'll be great on like Halloween, uh, leading up to like the festive season because you know you have those really cold nights and you can snuggle up under the blanket with your fairy lights on. Also it does have this like stenciled edge 
and I genuinely cannot tell if you can see it from here. <laughs> yeah, each story is different, so I can't really give you a synopsis on them. But yeah, I'm looking forward to trying that out. This one came yesterday, um, Explorers at Pirate Island by Alex Bell. This one comes out to start November. Thank you so much to Faber and Faber for sending me this. I love and adore the Polar Bear Explorers Club series by Alex Bell. This one I think is the sequel to the Ocean Squid Explorers Club because it has the same main character from the Ocean Squid Explorers Club. But this is essentially just set in such an adventurous world where there are different kinds of explorers and we are following the Ocean Squid Explorers Club, and I believe this one's a sequel to it. Yeah, apparently there is the Collector holding a group of children prisoner, and it's up to Ursula and her friends to set them free. Oh, it says zombie skeletons. Mean a daring rescue from a whirlpool and travel through a dinosaur graveyard. I love absolutely every single thing that this mentioned. I love pirate stories. I think it's going to be so... I kind of... I need to bump this on my table, y'all. I need to read this for the leader film. Uh, you know what? This is really hurting my arm. <laughs> Next we have... The Sword in the Stone by T.H. White. Thank you so much, Harry, for sending me this book. This one is for my From Book to Disney adaptation series, and it'll be part two of the Silver Age video that I'm in the middle of working on. I just finished this yesterday, actually, and I did enjoy it, because it is, you know, King Arthur and Merlin and all of that. It is set in the past, but there are some like, kind of modernizations brought into it, which I guess like makes a lot of sense, because the Disney movie that adapted this book does kind of the same thing, and I enjoy seeing the similarities and the differences in this, so I can't wait to talk about this in the video I'm doing. But yeah, this is essentially the King Arthur origin story and how King Arthur pulled the sword from the stone. I enjoyed my time reading it, so thank you so much again, Harry, for giving me this book. This one I was excited for, If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. This one is the Waterstones exclusive edition. At least I think it's exclusive to Waterstones. But it's signed, it has black suede edges, and it has a gold bookmark thingy. So that's really cool. Stunning, and it is Dark Academia. I literally just watched Chandler from Chandler Ainsley read this book in her recent vlog, and that was so much fun. Under the dust jacket, there really isn't anything. It is just like the title, and it's just a, a plain orange design. It was the black sprayed edges for me. Yeah, as well as like the ribbon bookmark. That's, that's really nice and cool. So this one, I believe, follows Oliver, who has been in jail for a murder he may or may not have committed. And on the day he's released, the detective who put him away is retiring, and he wants to know exactly what happened 10 years before. So I think it goes into like some kind of backstory or it just goes through the events. And I do know this has a lot of Shakespeare references or it's got a lot to do with Shakespeare. I'm looking forward to that because I do like Shakespeare. I've heard mixed things. I have heard mixed things. I know this is also one of Ali's favourite books, Ali from Hardback Order. And I do believe Lexi from Alexandra Rosen also enjoyed this book. So Doc Academia, I really, 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 really want to read it. It's gorgeous. I really, 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 really like you. Next, I have a proof copy of The Bird Singers by Eve Wasaki Morris. Eve is a debut middle grade author, but Eve does work in the children's book industry. And I've, you know, worked with her in the past. She's fantastic. And I cannot wait to read this book. It looks so good. Even the final copy, I think the final cover is out. I believe it is because I remember looking at it thinking, God, that's gorgeous. But yeah, this one comes out in February. It came yesterday and I'm just super excited. This one follows two sisters, Leah and Izzy, and they are on holiday in Poland. They love like myths and legends to do with Poland and things. But then on their holiday, like strange things begin to happen. I believe that's what happens, yeah, uh, sinister things even. Sinister, oh my gosh, that changes everything. They discover that some myths are more real than they could have imagined. Uh, there is even like a cute little map. There's even a cute little map in. Oh, I love the look of that. Okay, this one looks so good. Cannot wait to read it. Check it out. Okay, I'm gonna go with these ones next because I've got a big chunk here. But these are some Goosebumps Series 2000 books. Oh my gosh, didn't you think that I would never ever touch a Goosebumps book again after my three and a half hour vlog? No. <laughs> Just recently read all 62 original Goosebumps books, did a three and a half hour vlog for it, and that's done pretty well. I'm super like excited and chuffed to bits that it's done as well as it has because I genuinely thought it would flop. But yeah, it's just inspired me even further to do my follow-up for it, which I want to read the Goosebumps series 2000 books. 
in a vlog. There's only 25 books in that series, but I do have some of the Goosebumps series 2000 books, but I didn't have all of them. So I had to get 12 of them from eBay. Like literally they were about two pound each. And the ones I got were Bride of the Living Dummy. I also have The Invasion of the Body Squeeze as part one. I always had part two, but I never had part one, strangely. And then I Am Your Evil Twin, which looks, I mean, that cover's a little bit scary, not gonna lie. We also have Revenge R Us, which kind of like the idea of that, Toys R Us, Revenge R Us. Fright Camp, honestly, like, I'm kind of sick of the whole camp thing in the Goosebumps series, so I really hope that's a good one. Headless Halloween, which I'm super excited to read. I believe I read this when I was a kid. That one and the next one, Attack of the Graveyard Ghouls. I believe I read these two because I had the collection of them in, like, a one book set. So I had to get these ones because that copy is just an omnibus edition and it looks rather gross now. So I got these two. I'm super excited for both of those. And then Brain Juice. Brain Juice was also in that collection as well. And then we have Return to Horrorland. One Day at Horrorland was one of my favourite Goosebumps books from the original series. So I'm excited to Return to Horrorland because there wasn't any sequels in the original series for it. And then we have Scream School, and then we have The Mummy Walks, which I guess is some kind of follow-up to Because of the Mummy's Tomb thing. Slappy's Nightmare, of course, uh, Living Dummy. And then I think I only have six more books to get in that series, and then I've got all the series 2000 books. So yeah, I got all 12 of these because I really do want to do a reading vlog of reading all 25 Goosebumps series 2000 books. That one won't be as long as the original one. Yeah, I'm actually really excited because I think these books are darker than the original series too. So there might be less pranks and more scares, which is exactly what I want. I probably won't do this until like March. I need a break from Goosebumps for a while, but not pass up a good deal. And then I have Iron Widow by Sinan J. Zhao, and I am super excited about this. This was one of my anticipated books for the second half of 2021. And I had it pre-ordered, it came signed, by the author as well, I'm so super happy about that. So this one is set in a world where there are aliens beyond the Great Wall and the boys of this community are the ones who sort of pilot these robots that fight these aliens and the females of this world have to be their co-pilots but also have to like sacrifice themselves. Like, I think it's called concubine pilots, concubine co-pilots or something like that. So our main characterization, she decides to offer herself up as a concubine pilot but she's trying to assassinate the person responsible for her sister's death. And miraculously, she comes from the ashes and she's declared the Iron Widow because she has survived. So yeah, Cishan gets a taste of power. She wants to free the women of this world. And it just sounds like such an incredible, powerful story. It says on the blurb that is The Handmaid's Tale meets Pacific Rim. And I'm rather intrigued by that premise. So yeah, I'm excited to read this one. So definitely anticipated, hope it lives up to it. Nothing really under the dust jacket, but the title. Another middle grade then, Christmas Carols by Mel Taylor Percent. And this one has these Christmas lights sprayed edges, which is super, super cool. And one of the main reasons why I picked it up, because I just love that. I love that so much. And then, you know, you open the cover to the family there. And I believe this is a family who celebrate Christmas all year round. Yeah, every day is Christmas and they want to spread cheer 365 days a year. The main character is called Holly and they end up moving to a new place and Holly, she still wears like a Santa backpack and she sings Christmas carols at school, but she's getting funny looks and things and it might be that she is starting to lose her Christmas spirit in this new place. So, I mean, it is a little bit, uh, you know, strange to have a Santa backpack like say during the summer or sing Christmas carols at school when it's not Christmas. So, I mean, but I'm still interested to see how this story unfolds. And hopefully I get all of the Christmas festive vibes in this. So yeah, and also signed by the author, so it's a win for everyone. Uh, let's go here. So next I have The King in Yellow by Robert W. Chambers. I recently read this for a vlog where I read four books from BuzzFeed's Most Disturbing Books That Traumatize Readers list. So I do have that video, you can check it out. I'll link it down below. So yeah, this was written in like the 1800s, 1895 I believe. And it is a set of four different short stories where there is this recurring motif of the King in Yellow. And the King in Yellow is a play, and the play drives people insane. And we don't ever really say or understand why it drives people insane, but whenever there is this mention of the King in Yellow, strange things happen. And it's like so bizarre, it's like, I don't, I don't know, it, 
It was so hard to explain, but I really did enjoy the four short stories that were in this that kind of connected through The King in Yellow. I love the concept of it. It had me so intrigued. I honestly don't understand or know what I read. So, but it was really, really good. I really enjoyed it. And I think if you're a fan of classics, I think you would enjoy it as well. But yeah, uh, not a bad one. And definitely check out that vlog if you can. Two books I got in the fairy loot box and they were Defy the Night by Bridget Kamara with, you know, purple sparkly spread edges and Beasts of Prey by Iana Gray. I wasn't the biggest fan of the Curse of Dark and Lonely series, but I am excited to read this one because it just sounds a little bit better than that one. This one follows an apothecary apprentice and she kind of risks her life to find these like petals or some kind of cure for the sickness that's going around. But the king is ruthless. I think the king is selfish. I think there might be some of what they need in the palace. I believe she attempts to break into the palace to steal some of this cure for the townspeople. So yeah, I mean, it already sounds much better than A Curse of Don Roni, not gonna lie. So looking forward to reading that one. But the other book that came in February was this one too, which I had never heard of before. This one follows someone called Coffee, who is a beast keeper. And they didn't want to be a beastkeeper. I think they're trying to pay off, yeah, pay off the, her family's debts. But then this fire happens and this beast escapes. And then she ends up pairing up with this warrior guy to go into the greater jungle and kind of find this beast. So it sounds like a really good adventure. And it says the hunt begins. And I kind of like the idea of that. It sounds really exciting, fast paced. I'm looking forward to reading it. Another middle grade, we have Locked Out Lily by Nick Lake. And this is a pretty good, it looks like a spooky one. And I love Under the Dust Shack we have that key there. It's also illustrated by Emily Gravitt. And it's signed by both the author and the illustrator in there too. There is some kind of like body swap thing happening in this because she is sent to live with her grandmother while her mum has a baby. But then when she kind of comes back home, she sees that her parents aren't quite the same. They've been replaced by the replacements. And she ends up having some animal companions, including a mole, a snake, a mouse, and a crow. And she must face her fears and summon her courage to break back into her own house. So it sounds really good. I'm loving the illustrations. The illustrations look really, really cool. So yeah, Locked Out Lily by Nick Lake looks pretty awesome. Then we have The Last Graduate by Naomi Novik. This one, I got the first book. I think it was in an Illumicrate box last year. So I felt compelled to get the second book as well. And it has like a sprayed edge, a stencil sprayed edge there, and then green on the top and bottom. It is less than two of the Scholomans. I have not yet read the first one. I might try and read both of them together. So I get the full kind of picture. All I really know about the series really is that it's like a dog school of magic. And that intrigues me, it really does. I don't think it's anything under the dust tracker. Yeah, nothing under the dust tracker to show you. And I could go downstairs and grab the first one so I can tell you what the first one was about. But at the same time, I kind of don't want to do that. <laughs> I feel like I'm probably the last person to read this anyway, so you'll already know what it's about. But yeah, I wanted to get it before it stopped selling in the hardback so it could match my first one, which I know sounds very shallow, but I would have just ended up trying to find it anyway, like in a year or two, when I finally did get a chance to read the first one. So I might as well get on top of it now. And that's what I did. But to be fair, I am really looking forward to it. I think it's gonna be really, really good. Okay, I've got some middle grades next. Honestly, this video is all over the place. Ghost Cloud by Michael Mann. This one looks so awesome, but also look under the dust jacket. Really, really pretty, isn't it? So this one is set in a world where children are kidnapped and forced to work at this power station. We follow 12 year old Luke. We follow Luke, who can see ghostly things. And he meets a ghost called Alma, I believe her name is. And she can ride on clouds, she can bend the kind of shape of clouds and things like that. But then Luke discovers that he is half human, half something else. And he also needs to find out why kids are being kidnapped and forced to work at this power station. The cover drew me in. This was a total cover by. The cover drew me in. And it has ghosts in it, but it doesn't sound like it's going to be really spooky. It just sounds like it's going to be very adventurous. And I don't know if this will be the start of a series, but it should be because I love the premise so much. And yeah, I think Michael Mann is the debut author too. So I'm just excited to give that one a shot. One that I feel like everyone's probably would have heard of is Dark Waters by Catherine Arden. This one is the third book in the Small Space, series. And I did do an interview with Catherine Arden recently for this book. 
So I will link that interview down in the description box. It was an awesome interview. Loved meeting Catherine Arden and talking about the Small Spaces series. The first Small Spaces followed Ollie, who takes this book from this woman who was about to throw it away. And there was like the story with a story. There was a smiling man who was like the scarecrow. A lot of scary, spooky things happen. And yeah, this one, they go to like this lake. I was going to wait until the paperback version of it. But yeah, I couldn't wait because I had to do the interview. So I had to get it for the interview. So I'm not you know, sad about it. I might try and get the first two in hardback too. But this is a super cool book and I believe there's only going to be four books in the series. So this is the penultimate book in that series. So yeah, very exciting. Then I have A Mouse Called Mika by Matt Haig. This is a very white book, but I believe this is a Christmas book. It might be related to the Boy Called Christmas series that Matt Haig did. And I really enjoyed that series. I, well, I only read the first one. I still have the second and third one to read. So yeah, I think this might be related to it. So this one follows about, well, a mouse called Mika who feels left out by the trolls and the pixies that this mouse lives with. And then he meets another mouse and he believes that, you know, now he can probably fit in. But apparently the quest or mission or whatever he has to do is just beginning. No idea what the mission is. It doesn't say. So I'm intrigued by it. But I'm also intrigued to see if this actually does relate to the Boy Called Christmas series. I don't know, but it is also illustrated by Chris Mould and he did the Boy Called Christmas series as well. So this fits right in. Speaking of Christmas, we have Wish You Was, The Tiny Guardian of Lost Letters by Alexandra Page. This looks so cute and adorable. This honestly does. Like this one's definitely set during Christmas time. So this one is set in 1952 in London and Penny is, well, she kind of works at the post office with her uncle, I believe. And she sees this little mouse go off with like a letter, but it turns out this mouse is like the guardian of lost letters that are supposed to be on their way to Santa Claus. So I think Penny joins this mouse in helping because there is also something lurking in the shadows that is trying to stop the letters getting to Santa or something like that. It just sounds like such a great, I might even butcher that up, but it sounds like such a great festive Christmassy book and I think it's gonna fill me with all of the Christmas joy. So yeah, it looks really good. Nothing under the dust jacket, but it does have a map in the end papers. So that's really cool if you wanna read that for Believe Thon or the map prompt. That will definitely work. So yeah, that's that's another great Christmas one there. Gosh, I've still got some to go. Another middle grade we have is Dragon Skin by Karen Foxley. This one was kindly sent to me from Push Compress. I had no idea it was coming. Hadn't even heard of it either. But this one follows a young girl called Pip, who is looking for lost treasure and things, but she ends up coming across a sick dragon. And I believe she has to look after this dragon. There is no instruction manual on how to look after this dragon. So she has to like try and help it. And it just sounds like it might be one of those stories where they bond with like this, well, you know, like an animal bonding kind of uh, story. It looks like it might teach our main character some important lessons about the world, but also a dragon, a baby dragon. So what more do you want? It sounds really good. I think it's just come out and that might be why the publisher sent me it. So if so, I apologize for not having read it yet, but I am excited to read it. Don't get me wrong and it will get read eventually because I love the premise for it. Let's change it up a bit and talk about The Devil Wears Prada by Lauren Weisberger. And I love the film adaptation of this. I love Meryl Streep and Hathaway, Emily Blunt. That film is iconic. I love that film so much. So The Devil Wears Prada, I've been really interested in reading the book so I can compare it in a video potentially. So yeah, I think it is essentially just like the movie where we have Miranda Priestly, she is like the head of this magazine. And then we have Andrea who is like very new to the job and has to sort of deal with Miranda and her demands and things. So I really enjoyed the movie. It's been years since I watched the movie. So I'm excited to give this one a try. And also to see if I enjoy the book. I've heard mixed things about the book, but I'm excited to see what I end up thinking of it. Then thank you so much, Adrienne, for sending me The Merry Adventures of Robin Hood by Howard Pyle. I need to read this one for my From Book to Disney adaptation series. This one is like, you know, the Barnes & Noble leather bound edition. Honestly, I love those editions so, so much. And I've never read any kind of Robin Hood story before and I do need to for my video series. So I think you all know what Robin Hood is about. So I won't mention what it's about. But again, thank you so much, Adrian, for sending me this. I appreciate it so much. It was such a nice surprise. And I just, I am in love with this edition. Look at the gilded edges. Look at it, it's beautiful. And end papers, end papers, people. 
So I hope it's a good story. Well, I'll talk about this one next. This was a proof that I won on Twitter. And this is All That's Left in the World by Eric J. Brown. It comes out in March 2022. This is Jamie and Andrew are strangers. They're also two of the last people left alive. And I do believe this is gay. And that is why I entered the giveaway for it. And I won. I won, people. <laughs> yeah, a super flu wipes out most of the population. Is it the best book to read in this current climate? Probably not. However, if this gives me hope, if this gives me some great queer romance, then I am 100% in. I need to figure out a way to fit this in a TBR. Maybe not for believe a but definitely relatively soon, because, oh, it's just beautiful. It's gonna be so good. I just know it. I feel it in my bones. Next, I have Night Books by J.A. White. I love the Netflix adaptation of this. I've never read the book, but I watched the Netflix adaptation with Kristen Ritter. I love her from like Jessica Jones, Don't Trust That Bitch in a Pop in 23. I just love her as an actress and she is fantastic in that movie. So I really enjoy the adventure aspect of that movie and I really want to read the book that it's based on. So it essentially, it follows like this young kid who loves writing stories, well horror stories in particular, but then he's kind of like, well in the movie he stumbles into this apartment that belongs to a witch who kind of kidnaps children and she forces him to write a horror story every single day so that he can read it to her every night. I hope that's what the book is mainly about. I think it might be. I really adore the movie so I really think I'm going to adore this book. I'm down to the last two now, down to the last two. Both of them were sent by publishers but this one is A Clock of Stars Beyond the Mountains by Francesca Gibbons, illustrated by Chris Riddell. I loved the first book so much. It followed Imogen and Marie and they are sisters and they follow this moth into this tree and it takes them to this incredible world. It's very Narnia-esque and I love the illustrations too. I'm not 100% sure what the second book is about. Nothing really under the dust jacket but I do love this colour. But yeah, this is the brand new sequel to that. It's just come out. But thank you so much HarperCollins for sending me a copy of this book. So super excited to read it. But yeah, if you have not yet checked out the first book, please do so. It is so adventurous, so magical. I love it. Then finally we have Fireborn, 12 and the Frozen Forest by Ashling Fowler. This one, I read the proof copy back in May, I believe it was. So I do have a reading blog for this. And I enjoyed it. I thought it was a really great adventure. Very dark. So this one is set in a world where... People take this pledge, including 12. She has given up her name so that she can help protect the village and fight. But then a girl is taken and she is probably one of the only people who is concerned about her and wants to go after this young girl and save her. So it's a really good adventure. I'm really looking forward to seeing where this story will go. Nothing under the dust jacket, but I thought I would check for you guys anyway. But yeah, thank you so much HarperCons for sending me this book. Really appreciate it. I did really enjoy this when I read it back in May. So there we have it. Those were all the books that I hold in the past, like, well, longer than two months because I didn't show any of the middle grade in the last book haul video I did. So I saved most of them for this one. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like if you did. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment down below. Let me know if you've read any of these or if you've hauled any really exciting books recently. I would love to know. And yeah, hopefully I will see you in the next video. Bye.